Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Bucket Fawns and my name is Terry. Today we're out here in the backyard oasis and it's completely frozen over. Uh, there's snow everywhere, it's very cold. But I was just in a conversation on Reddit last night with a guy in New Jersey who was trying to find a pond that was not frozen because he wanted to build an ecosphere. And uh, a lot of people uh, weren't very helpful in the comments and stuff. So I thought I'd come out here in the middle of winter with some frozen ponds and take some samples and see what we can find. So let's take a walk through the oasis and get started. Now, of course, it is frozen over out here. It's a winter wasteland. And I'm kind of glad that I didn't rebuild everything just yet because we would have lost a lot. So not a big loss right now. I'm actually kind of excited. Hopefully the fish are okay. I'm so worried about the mosquito fish. Uh, this pond was thriving yesterday. So, yeah, let's get in here and see what we can find. I happen to have 12 of these little sample containers that someone got me for Secret Santa at my uh, at my job. So we're going to take a few of these and take some samples. First, I'm going to need something to bust this ice because it is really thick. <sighs> we're going to borrow one of our boulders here. <sighs> there we go. Ooh, that is cold. <laughs> oh, look, there's duckweed. Can y'all see that? <sighs> so there's duckweed in there. <laughs> oh, it's so cold. It hurts. <laughs> uh, I'm from Florida, so I'm not really used to this. All right, so we're going to try to take a sample here. <sighs> Woo! <laughs> it hurts so much. It doesn't go away either. It just hurts. <laughs> so uh, right away, we do have some alligator weed in here uh, that's somehow survived. Quite a bit, actually. Here's one little sample container. Now, there's probably not going to be much in here because it's just from the surface. So I need to get one from down below. There we go. Let's try some of that. I accidentally filmed this part in slow motion, but it looks so cool I decided to leave it in the video. Uh, the video might look a little weird as I will be speeding up the footage to uh, real time. All right. Bit of an odd angle. Here's our sago palm. Poor girl's covered in ice. But here's one of our oldest bucket ponds right here. She's been out here for like four or five years and she's never been frozen, so very curious what might be going on in here. <laughs> that was fun, right? Oh look, duckweed. <laughs> oh, there we go. There you go. One sample of that stuff. <laughs> it hurt so much, you guys. <laughs> guys, I hate to say it, but we might have lost our mosquito fish. I mean, they weren't really built for this kind of weather. Let alone ice forming on top of the pond. It's really cold out here. I don't know how much of this left. <laughs> so, oh, look, some water lettuce. Oh, some poor beat up water lettuce. Oh my god. All right, I can't keep this up too much longer. My fingers are freezing. <laughs> oh, look. Some frozen hornwort. That's not any good. Oh, uh, anyway, let's get in here and take a sample. Uh, uh. There we go. Oh, oh, it's painful, you guys. <laughs> uh, we're gonna take that water lettuce plant here in a moment. Whew, oh my God. I am not equipped to handle this. <laughs> like, biologically. Oh, okay, okay, we got one more. 
we're gonna take this old jar. I'm gonna take this old jar and we're gonna get a sample of the refrigerator pond. Look at all that duckweed. Duckweed can survive the freeze. <laughs> Now, previously, this was teeming with snail leeches. They took over this container for some reason. But, uh, there's some old frozen duckweed for you. Yep. Alright, I'm going to go warm this stuff up. We'll see what we find. Alright, guys, we are back in the fish room. I have allowed the samples to warm up for a few hours. Uh, up to room temperature. And now we are building a new jar aquarium. I'm going to add all of the samples in here. And this is basically how I handle wild samples. I, uh, you know, I build a little aquarium. I throw them in there. I add some food, some fresh water, and I observe. I wait to see, like, what we captured and what we can uh, make use of, what we can potentially incorporate into our other projects. So for this jar, I have uh, added just a small amount of aquarium gravel. The same stuff you get at the pet shop. Should be pH neutral, just a bunch of little river stones, I assume. Uh, but on top of that, we are adding all of the wild samples. And I really love the little blur effect I used here. I think it was really cool. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, this is basically how I do things, you know. I examine the samples, and uh, just like the wild Daphnia that we captured recently, I'll have another video up about them soon. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you know, I capture some stuff, I check it out. We, uh, you know, build a wild tank, and we observe it for a while. And typically, I'll allow these wild aquariums to last for some time, uh, months or years. Now, I'm adding some uh, pond stones, some of those same gravel stones up on top of here. I should say river pebbles, not pond stones. Uh, but yeah, they're going to help to pin down some of that debris and allow the smaller particles to settle. And it should work out well. Here's a look at the surface. We have some duckweed up here. If you're not familiar with duckweed, it was very prominently featured in the snowy conditions outdoors. And so here's a good look at it. This is Lemna Minor. I love it. I have it in every project, just about. And among the duckweed, we see some action. We have some small creatures swimming around. And we have some small worms in here as well. That's really cool. I assume that's one of my wild-type tube effects worms, but I could be wrong. Uh, we have quite a few different species here in my ecosystems. And it's not likely that we captured something new because, you know, these are samples from the oasis. Uh, but it's possible. You never know. A frog might jump in here and he might have a new type of microfauna, you know, stuck on his leg or something. He might have brought it from another pond. Who's to say? But let's come back in a few days and see how the tank looks. Hey guys, it's 15 days later and I am super excited to check out the aquarium. Let's take a look. I have added a single slice of cucumber every week to help feed the microfauna inside and get them to start breeding. Uh, the tank looks pretty interesting, actually. I think it's really cool. And this is the type of aquarium that I would just have sitting on the shelf. This is a wild jar aquarium. There's going to be some algae and some issues. There are no snails in here, unfortunately. But I did find a dragonfly larva inside. And, of course, we love them. We love them to death. They are a big part of our outdoor ecosystem. And these are the same dragonflies that will come up and land on my hat or on my wife's finger. Uh, they're really cool. And uh, this could be a different species, of course, but that's just how they act here at the Oasis. I don't know if that's normal for dragonflies. Uh, but I definitely do not want to keep this guy indoors. Um, if you've never experienced it before, it's really freaky when a dragonfly busts out of your little aquarium. Especially while you're in there doing things. <laughs> Uh, we can raise them to adulthood in our aquariums, but it is a bit strange. So I want to let him go and make sure he has his best life out there in the ponds. And uh, we'll call him Fred. <laughs> Maybe we'll see Fred again one day when he's a beautiful flying uh, master of the skies. Otherwise, excuse me, elsewhere. <laughs> elsewhere in the aquarium. We do have some algae in here. Uh, some small particles, lots of little filaments. I would assume that's hair algae or uh, filamentous algae. Um, but adjusting the lighting here a bit, we have a very interesting looking aquarium, you guys. And right away, I can see some creatures in here swimming around. Now, this isn't the best example because these are samples from the oasis, but 
uh, typically when I take wild samples. You know, some things I catch, maybe I can't keep them alive, maybe they don't do well in my aquariums, maybe they just don't like being in captivity for one reason or another. Uh, so some things don't make it, and that's okay. You know, that's part of the process, but some things do. And typically, when you throw some wild samples into an aquarium in the style that you choose to run, uh, if they do survive in there, then they become very useful, in my opinion, you know? It's fun to, uh, to see what sticks with the way that I do things, and I assume other people do the similar type of hobby out there. Somebody has to. You guys watch these videos, right? But I am seeing some action, and here they are. Yeah, here's our culprits here. These are copepods. Uh, cyclops, I think that's what the regular people call them. Uh, but there they are, right there. Here's another one up there, and another one off to the side. These guys are great little creatures, and... Um, I don't know, you might raise them intentionally. You might be very interested in copepods. But for me, they're just kind of in the background in all of my aquariums, and I just kind of accept them. Uh, yeah, they like to scoot around and do their little swimming motion. Um, they might look like a little chubby letter Y. Uh, but other species, other versions of copepods might look a little bit different, just like our ostracods. But this tank is wild looking, you guys. It's really cool. And, yeah, I'll probably hang on to this for a while. We do need to put that dragonfly larva outside. Uh, but if nothing else, we've created an interesting copepod culture. And I can uh, kidnap a few of them and put them in another tank. Uh, otherwise, I will have to slow down the feeding schedule because there's a lot of cucumber debris in here that is not being eaten. And at this point, I think I might add a couple bladder snails as well. As they can help to clean up a lot of this debris. And uh, we might even inject some ostracods and some daphnia in here just for fun. Uh, we do love our microfauna. And, you know, uh, recently I did make a video where we were uh, attempting to raise microfauna, uh, daphnia, and ostracods together. And it came to my attention that the ostracods might eat the daphnia, so we're kind of worried about that. But so far it's not happening. Anyway, guys, we built a new wild aquarium. We found some life outdoors in the frozen wasteland. And I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope that you guys liked the video. I know my voiceovers can get a little goofy sometimes. Uh, I get kind of distracted. <laughs> I am not good at talking to people. So making these videos is like really important to me. And it, it means a whole lot uh, that I can do this. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Terry. This is Bucket Ponds. I'll always be here. You can always come watch some Bucket Pond stuff anytime. And I'm happy to have you. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to our Patreon supporters and YouTube members especially. If you'd like to support the channel, please do so through either option. Uh, I would prefer you become a YouTube member. Uh, it's only a dollar. And it's uh, easier for me to, you know, speak with you and such. I'm not very active on Patreon, to be honest. Uh, but for everyone else, thank you in general. We're growing really quickly. Uh, so thank you to all of our new friends. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.